Psst. Hey. Hey, you. Yeah, you. It's the Infinite Scroll Growing Part 2. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. This is the second installment of this mini-series. I've already done a scroll drawing like this previously, about a month ago. And you can see it too, there's already ink on the paper roll. So go watch that video if you haven't already, I'll try to remember to put a link up on the screen. Also, you should really think about subscribing because this is not the last video of this mini-series. I still have a bit of the roll left after today, so if you don't want to miss out on that, you know what to do. To refresh your memories, this paper roll is actually two rolls I taped together. These came from my time as a cashier, and really they are just the printer paper on which you get your receipt when you buy stuff. It's a really strange paper to draw on, there is almost no grain, it is really smooth. It feels even a bit plasticky, I don't think this is real paper. There is something I want to mention right away though. Something that started happening with this drawing, but did not happen the last time I did it. Somehow, the ink started bleeding a little bit today. With the same paper, same fountain pen and same ink, last time the lines were clean, but today the ink is bleeding a lot. I don't know why. Maybe it's too hot today and the ink is more runny? I don't know. In any case, it was kinda disappointing when it started doing that because a quarter of the roll had already been drawn on, so I can't really throw it away and start again. But don't worry, everything stays in the video. I am showing you everything, even the mistakes. And from three angles of that. I don't know if you guys enjoy having three point of views on the drawings I do. I personally like it, but I guess it could be a bit disorienting sometimes when I switch between them. Also, it makes me feel professional. Because when I start drawing, I have to set up my desk, pull the tripod forward for the top view angle, then place another tripod on the side with my old phone on it, and then set up my webcam in front of me to get the front view. It's a bit of a hassle, but it really feels good to do. The only thing that makes it a bit harder to record ink drawings is actually on the editing part. Because I have three cameras, I have to synchronize the footage. Only, the top down view is filmed on a digital camera that has a time limiter on it. I can't record footage for more than 30 minutes at a time with it, which forces me to put a timer on my phone to remember to lift my head and start a new recording after half an hour. But that's okay. The thing is though, I forget to make a signal for every sequence sometimes. You know the clap thing people do on movie sets to synchronize the cameras and the sound? Well, you know, something I have found to be really useful is to take a lighter and make a spark with it. Usually the spark only shows on one frame of the footage, which is really good for synchronization. Enough about recording setup stuff, okay? Let's talk about the drawing. In the Infinite Drawing video part 1, I made a lot of really loose sketches, like really abstracty, and then also representations of stuff like the Lofi girl and trees and such, but still with the loose pattern, like free-flowing, you could say. Today I wanted to make something a bit different, more firm and defined lines. Still a bit abstract at times, but different. Because I ended up with a small village last time, this time I started with the building also. I made some sort of palace with maybe statues in front of it, and then it transitions into a small shack with a slanted roof. From the shack, you can see maybe snakes flying around, which is the beginning of the abstract part. After the snakes, which is a pattern I started using maybe 10 years ago on my first abstract doodles by the way, there is the tail of the fish. This is a part I really like. It looks really complex and it's a pattern on different levels. You see, the fish is made from scales and each scale is made from two to three different parts filled with half circles. And then there's the tail that evolves into Triangle Mountain. There's not much to say about that, it's just a bunch of thin triangles jammed together. After that, however, is the eye bush. The rounded shape of the little snakies make me think of those Christmas plants you kiss under. Like, um, I don't remember the name in English right now, but you know what I mean. Except instead of berries, there are eyes in the middle. Now is my second favorite part of the drawing. In a transition that I would say is half smooth, 
The worm thing get denser and denser until it is nothing more than a happy mess. The mess is coming out of the door you can see right after. The door, in turn, is attached to a wall that twists into feathers or leaves. These feathers are nothing more than the end of a really long arrow that pierces an apple. Then the arrowhead leads to the lightning maze, which is self-explanatory. I am aware that I just spoiled what the end of the drawing looks like, but really there's no way you can fully understand my drawing until you see it for yourself, so keep watching until the end. One thing I want to talk about today and get your input on is something that has to do with YouTube and being a YouTuber. If you're not aware, when you upload a video, you get to choose which category of YouTube bets corresponds to your video. That is, I imagine, in order to select the audience that will be more likely targeted by the video. I won't list them all, but some of the categories are Film and Animation Autos and Vehicles Music Pets Gaming People and Blog Comedy Entertainment How To and Style and Education. Now, my question to you is, which category should I choose? I've been looking around for that one and honestly I can't find the perfect answer. Please help me down in the comments because I can't figure it out. Why isn't there an art category? Why is there auto and vehicles and not art? Some of my videos could be sorted into animation, I guess. Most of them into how to and style, just because of the draw along format and the drawing processes. Or education, maybe, for the same reasons. Maybe blog, because of how I usually talk about random stuff. I don't think comedy works. Entertainment, maybe, but not really. Like, honestly, I don't know. Please tell me in the comments. It's really frustrating that there isn't an art section. I guess I could try to look at artists on YouTube and see what they chose, but I can't figure out how to look that up. I think most of my videos so far have been in education and film and animation, depending on if it's more of a tutorial or more of storytelling. Because I said the word storytelling, let me talk about that for a bit. You guys know I'm a writer, right? I am making a cultivation novel at a rate of a chapter per week, and that's about 3000 words per week. And so far it's been received very well on the platforms I upload to, which are Royal Road and Web Novel. Recently I passed a small milestone that is really exciting. Well, a big milestone I guess. Because my novel has reached the length of a thousand pages. A thousand. That's like more than a lot of book series. That is incredible. And also my novel has had thousands of views per chapter, a lot of really nice comments as well. Honestly, I'm really glad people like it. Maybe you could give it a try as well. The link is obviously in the description. You know, I'm also going to upload on Royal World most of the stories I write for videos, like last week's Crawling Stone story. However, because of my accent and the way I write, which is not with words that are easy for me to pronounce sometimes, I couldn't understand why it's harder to listen to my stories rather than read them. So if that's your case, please consider reading it then. Oh, that's already the end of the drawing. I spoke for too long, excuse me. Here's the entire thing I drew for you today. Do give the video a like if you think it deserved it and please subscribe to see my next videos. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye!